Hi, it's Cam from Indie Week. And Daryl. And we're live as uh, we do every Thursday if we can. Yes. Last week we didn't. Uh, but uh, this is we're at the Indie Week office at the corner of Richmond and York, downtown Toronto. And uh, steps from City Hall. Yeah. And so. of course we're having a beverage, and today we need one. Um, I am having a lovely Trailer Park Boys Freedom 35 beer. From nice. Sunnyvale Trailer <laughs> Park. It's actually quite nice. I saw it at the liquor store the other day. I was checking out with a bottle of wine. It's like, oh yeah, I know what I'm drinking next Thursday. I gotta and salute me, the boys. Uh, I've got one by Crazy Uncle. It is a, a hard root beer, summer kind of drink, since it's getting nicer out. Yeah. So, cheers. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Freedom 35. Well, it doesn't work, boys, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> the beer works, but this Freedom 35 thing didn't work. <laughs> wow, this is actually quite good. Yeah. I don't yeah. mind the, the beer and root beer combination. It's pretty good. It's kind of like say. a grown-up a and I might go and buy some more of these for later. Sit so. by the pool. and <laughs> If Crazy Uncle is watching, send some uh, <laughs> down to the Indie Week office. Yeah, <laughs> same way. And if Sheila Roberts is watching, you know, I'm, I'm liking the beer. So. <laughs> Anyways, you had a busy, we had a busy week last week. Uh, we weren't on the air uh, because you were in New York. Yeah. With Cole and representing Indie Week. Yeah, so uh, last week uh, we were down in New York for a few days uh, attending a conference called Fest Forums, which is a conference for uh, festival producers and also companies that work with festivals such as uh, electronic cashless systems and... RFIDs and data and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, some really great people were there. Uh, really thank you to Fest Forums, uh, Lori and Stuart for having us. Uh, they did a fantastic job and uh, looking forward to being in their next uh, uh, version, which is in November in Santa Barbara. Lovely Santa Barbara. I love it. Haven't been, and, but I'm looking forward to it. And then you went down specifically for Fest Forums, obviously. Um, but then you checked, you know, your, your newspaper that day or whatever, and yep. low to your eyes did appear the name. Uh, the Cult, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were able to uh, contact some friends of ours, and we got to go see The Cult the first day that we were there. Uh, cult were, this is the best time I've seen The Cult. Ian Asbury sounded amazing. Oh, shout out to Patrick Weir. I see you just joined. Hey, bud. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, The Cult were great. They're what is fantastic. it when you when you travel? Because I remember you were in Montreal last year, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, the cult's playing tonight. The cult was playing there, too. <laughs> <laughs> they follow your itinerary, I guess. I don't know. It was good. Yeah, well, we actually talked about that. And uh, so, yeah, uh, that, made, that was a good highlight of the trip. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another uh, person we ran into that night was uh, Ryan Starr, who was on Rockstar Supernova, if you remember yeah, Rockstar my, Supernova. Come on, my girl Tara Sloan was on that too. Well, she was on Rockstar in excess, I guess. That's right. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine back then, uh, Lucas Rossi, won. Yeah. Right? Who signed to EMI Publishing because of that show, or yeah. was working with them very closely at one point. And Lucas just played at three shows just recently in Canada, like a month ago or so. So... Uh, oh, there's Patrick waving at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I can see that. <laughs> yeah, he says he needs a drink. Well, I'll have a, one for you. <laughs> so while you were in New York on Sunday night, I attended the uh, the Prison Prize Gala, mm. which was fantastic. I'm honored to be a juror there with uh, Lewis and John Calabro and one of 150 jurors across the country, which is a full year of responsibility. They send out the best of Canadian videos to us in groups of 20. We vote it down to 10. They announce the top 20, and then we pick our top three. Right. Um, it was a great night at uh, Tip Lightbox. They have a big party. They show all 10 videos. They give out some awards during it. Uh, Catronata, which I have a hard time saying, won for video of the year for a brilliant video called Light Spots. Right. Uh, our friends in July talk, hey, Leah and Peter, they won a special award of merit for the way they do their videos. Um, always in black and white, very artistic. Peter actually started in video production, I found, or he was talking about that night. Um, Andy Schaff won the People's Choice Award. Right. And then our old friend Don Allen was um, received like the, the award of excellent, like not the Hall of Fame award, but just the, you know, it's, it's sort of a Hall of Fame right. for his work with Revolver. And they had Fab Five Freddy come up 
to uh, induct induct Don right. and, and congratulate Revolver. So it was a, it was really cool to meet Fab Five Freddy. I know kids who listen to hip hop today they don't know the old school hip hop, which was, I wouldn't know. Yeah, <laughs> hip hop was four elements. It was beatboxing, it was break dancing, it was graffiti, and it was rapping. And that's right. And Fab Five Freddy, who is in the song Rapture by Blondie. Um, he was a graffiti artist with Basquiat and Futura 2000 and Keith Haring and is a very, very big part of the culture of hip-hop. So if you don't know much about hip-hop, kids, go read some books. And right. Nelson George put out a great book about it. And yeah, and it, uh, I was kind of ticked, like, uh, I was stuck in, in Yeah, New you were York. trying to get back. I was trying to get back, but uh, our airport got, I mean, our airplane got delayed and I ended up getting back, like, after midnight and yeah. obviously missed everything. But... Uh, Serious congrats to Don Allen. He's had such a con contribution to uh, the Canadian music scene as far as supporting artists and in the in the medium of music video. Like Tea Party was a, a big one. Yeah. Uh, but like, even, even the, the list is everything. <laughs> and, and the directors from Little X, who's now X, who went in the Hall of Fame last year, Flores Sigismondi, they've all come through Revolver and ended yeah. up working with Bowie and with Katy Perry and with Rihanna. And it's just incredible the amount of talent. Yeah. that has come through Revolver throughout all the years. The exactly. only thing that put a bit of a damper on was the next day when it was decided that Much Fact would no longer exist. So so many That's of right. these videos that were shown on, on on Sunday night and the videos we reviewed all year long were funded by Much Fact, so it's going to have a, a huge impact on video directors and, and companies and artists as well. So hopefully something will come to fill the void, but... It was very distressing industry news to hear that the next day. Yeah, exactly, like the very next day. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, celebrate one night and, yeah, you know, the next day. Um, and then Tuesday this week I was at YouTube for a uh, meet and greet with one of the YouTube influencers. Um, Explain what a YouTube influencer is. Somebody who has a large audience <laughs> and they can influence uh, other people by the messaging they put out. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, it's today with Trey, uh, which is more of a family. Like it's, uh, he does videos about him and his wife and their kids. So uh, a lot of the audience was very young, mm. right? And it's also an interracial couple, uh, which is a very positive message, which is great. Uh, so I was really lucky to be there. Um, the YouTube space, of course, we had our tech day there last year, uh, so it was good to be back in the space and check it out and see how things are going. Yeah, Toronto's so. very lucky. It's one of the few cities in the world that actually has a dedicated YouTube space. So. Yep. Oh, I see Seb joined from Edmonton. Hey, Seb. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that was cool. Uh, it, was, it was cool to come back and go to another event right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that was last night. We hit the harbor last night. That's right. Uh, we were invited by our friends at Music Coin, which is a Bitcoin blockchain. initiative. Blockchain. Bitcoin blockchain company. Uh, Brian Byrne, who formerly of I Mother Earth and a great singer-songwriter on his own, and his yeah. partner Ilio. Uh, they had a big bo uh, boat cruise last night throughout Toronto Harbor, where there was different companies presenting different yeah. blockchain initiatives, which you can probably speak better of than I can. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, if... If you don't know about blockchain, definitely uh, check it out. It's basically a, a new type of online currency, and they're trying to protect. Like, it's it's meant to be easily transferred, secure, uh, but also make sure that everybody gets paid out properly mm -hmm. from it. And uh, it's there's still a lot of question marks. It's still a little bit unknown. So so the hurdle is is. Uh, getting it to market and getting it so that it becomes commonplace. Right, because there was a company like Jax last night, so you would have yeah. a blockchain wallet on, on your mobile device that is your bank account, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, well, there's so, it's, it's, they're trying to like even like a credit card and everything. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is so. the future. It's just very convoluted right now, I think, to the, you know, the person like myself who's not maybe that savvy when it comes to new technologies. Right. Well, we were, uh, we had partners in UK uh, pretty early on, uh, Oravine. Uh, Oravine, about three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, really good friends of ours. Shout out to Ken and Dave. Um, you know, they were kind of like really innovators in, in putting blockchain into the music space a few years ago. Um, you know, it, it's something that I think will happen 
I think the issue is is there's many companies using the technology all in slightly different mm -hmm. matters or purposes. So uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, we're, we're very happy, and thank you to Music Coin for yes. bringing us along, and shout out to Brian. Uh, and Elio. And Elio. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's very much like yeah. you know streaming services were four or five years ago, where there was a lot of competition in the market, but now it's sort of sorting itself out, and... I think yeah. this this will happen as well, even with MP3s back in the day, or you know, download sites, and you know, right. But it's it's figuring itself out, and it's it's sort of Darwinian that way that the strong will survive. Yeah, and I just see Seb just call us nerds. I'm the nerd out of you're the nerd. nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been the nerd. So uh, yeah, and that was last night. Tonight, uh, there's a few things going on. Yeah, my, our friend Blair Packham, uh, formerly of the Jitters, has a new album out called Unpopular Pop. That uh, doors open at seven o'clock at the Pilot, uh, Young, just north of Bloor, which is a great space upstairs. Yeah. Co-owned by Arthur Potts. Uh, and the MVP. Jitters are going to do a quick set too. The Jitters are going to do a quick set there, but it's an early show. Yep. And also, you can listen to Blair and Bob Reed every Saturday night on uh, News Talk 1010 across mm -hmm. the country. They do a great music show that I've, I've been lucky enough to be on. And uh, also tonight, uh, really good friends of ours, Sumo Psycho. Uh, at the Opera House mm -hmm. with uh, also other friends of ours, Birthday Massacre, who played Indie Week quite a while ago, but uh, have been uh, a band that's really consistent touring around, and uh, both bands are going on tour in the States. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a big tour. When you, when, if you go to the Sumo Psycho uh, Facebook page or whatever, there's a lot of dates. Yeah. Yeah, well, Birthday Massacre, they've been a road band, and they've done very well. Mm -hmm. So kudos to them to still keep going, and uh, that's a show I'd love to see. Yeah, so, me too, but you know, I, I'm going to be at uh, the 40th birthday party for Q107. Nice. Uh, yeah. They're having the original staff, although I wasn't staff, they invited um, a few record company people from back in the day on the 30th floor at Bloor and Young, when you know, bringing artists up and stuff like that, then going to rock and roll heaven, so there's a big reunion party tonight uh, that I'm fortunate enough to be invited to, so I will be... Going to see some old friends and faces from days gone by. My friend Gene Politis has moved back to Toronto from Jesse and Gene in the mornings at Q107, so he's coming back to the city. And nice. Really looking forward to it. Of course, I'm an idiot. I thought it was Tuesday and headed up there. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't go knock on the door of where the party was, but ran yeah. into a friend of mine on the street. It's like, isn't the party Thursday? It's like, oh. Well, it works out. You have tomorrow off. You'll exactly. be able to recover. Yes, we all need a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> a longer than long yes. weekend. So um, that leads us into like some stuff going on Indie Week wise. Spotify, Spotify. The new playlists are up for this week. I've got next week's ready to go on Monday as well. There's some great new music there. Wow, one of my favorite tracks of the year, a band called Sparks, that you've probably never heard of. But they have 26 albums out. They've had number one hits around the world. Right. They did a joint venture album with uh, Franz Ferdinand last year. But there's some great new music on our, our lists, and there's some great new music from around the world as well on our uh, applied list. So. Go to our website, check them out. The playlists will be there. They come up every Monday. So. Yeah, this is one thing that we're always doing, uh, basically from this point on. Like any band that's applied to Indie Week, uh, have a chance of being on the playlist. Um, and this is ongoing. This will be where the fast festivals past the festival, like yeah. th every week. Uh, so it's also a good way to kind of look at a curated playlist to discover new music, mm -hmm. right? And not just from North America, but around the world. So, so if you've applied to Indie Week, you might end up on one of our playlists. So. As long as you're on Spotify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it helps to have a Twitter handle as well, but we talk about that every week and stuff. Right. Um, some sad news in rock and roll. Uh, the, the first one was, it's more local and more of my generation, but our friend Freddie Pompey, who was one of the original members of the Baltones, Toronto's first really hardcore original scene punk bands, then he went on to form The Secrets, um, moved back to Philadelphia a while ago, and was right. became ill with lung cancer. Freddie and his wife Margaret back then had a store called New Rose on Queen Street West, which was the epicenter of Toronto punk, where you'd buy your t-shirts, your bracelets, your Clash singles. It was always a hangout on Saturday afternoons, and after a long battle, uh, I know they did an, a nice benefit for him at the garrison earlier this year, because he was a little down and out financially with the U.S. Uh, medical system. So. Right. Unfortunately, uh, we, we lost Freddie, and uh, to Freddie. Cheers to Freddie. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you know, 
you can probably take this more than I can, you know, the news this morning that we got. Yep. Um, and just before we get into that, because it's going to be a probably a pretty long discussion, is uh, I noticed Seb's asking uh, where the website is for the playlists. I just wanted to respond to that. Uh, Canada.indieweek.com. And uh, I'll be posting the link uh, right there on our video. So there's a link. Uh, yeah, today. Wow. Yeah. Bad news. Chris Cornell. Um, yeah, so definitely from my generation, Chris Cornell was a big influence on me, but uh, I just couldn't believe the news this morning. Yeah, as it was, you, you couldn't see it coming. Um, there was no obvious signs, and then with, with all the early reports, but there was just no well, they're telltale on, sign. They're on tour. They played last night. Um, it's just sad, you know. Uh, uh, it, it has been in public, like he, he did go public with, that, with his addictions and, you know, with addictions are usually other struggles mm. um, and obviously something happened. We don't know yet, uh, there's also a lot of speculation going on, um, but yeah, it's a very sad thing and, um, you know, I'll probably talk quite a bit about it, like, I mean... Yeah, you know, we all have, you know, you know, band memories, the first time I saw them play was... Um, with Voivod, I was working with Voivod and Nothing Face, and they had Soundgarden and Faith No More at the concert hall, which I'm so happy that another generation of kids is going to be able to see concerts there because it was so integral in my life growing up, seeing great bands there. Right. Where they were, you know, third on the bill at that point, and then they ended up headlining the concert hall and Lollapalooza. I think we were both at the same one at Molson Park in Barrie. <laughs> yep. Um... Yeah, like so. I'll I'll sort of start with my introduction yeah. to Soundgarden. Like, uh, I I know like this is now dating me and going back, but uh, is eighty nine ninety. I was in uh, Grant McEwen College in Edmonton, and uh, my roommate was Gary Ostafichuk. Shout out to Gary. He's still playing music in Saskatchewan. Um, and like we, our apartment was like right across the street from the school, so we were kind of like the musician hangout because we were right there, and uh, every week Much Music had a show where they debuted new videos, new singles, and whatnot, and this one particular show, I remember it really clearly, it was um, Faith No More and Soundgarden and another band, I can't, the third band I can't remember, but Faith No More, Automatic, love that band, it was uh, From Out of Nowhere was the song, and then uh, Loud Love by Soundgarden. And I was floored, like, immediately. Here's this dissonant, really obnoxious band with feedback, screeching vocals. Uh, the visuals of the video were, like, car crashes with ambulances, strobes, and they're in an industrial setting. So I immediately loved it. And uh, a lot of the people around me, the other musicians, were kind of like, who's this? And it sounds dissonant. So there's a band, a hard, hard band to kind of, like, just take on right away, because mm -hmm. they weren't the regular pop rock formula. And they weren't hair metal, or they weren't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it was right around that time where hair metal was... Well, they all had long hair at the time. Yeah. Right? But uh, it, it, it odd time signatures, I believe the song was like 7-4, I think. Or that's hands all over. But anyways. Um, and then fast forward, like, so, so that was like, immediate love the band, and then... Uh, I saw a concert in Edmonton in 94 uh, with Vadim, so shout out to Vadim as well because he's often watching and we were talking to you earlier today about it. Um, it was an interesting show because I think, and I'm trying to remember, like I, we were talking earlier, Reverend Horton Heat and Cadillac Tramps was the opener and I was actually on the guest list for Reverend Horton Heat through the record label, which I think was... I think the rep was Kendra, and I think it was BMG. I okay. could be wrong. Hi, Kendra. We used to work together. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and so it was like a, it was a weird rock and roll, non-rock and roll moment, because like we go backstage to meet Reverend Horton Heat, and he's known for his addictions and drinking and partying. And here he is in this fairly big empty room, just him at a table, and there's this counter full of booze, and he's like, have, have whatever you want, because I don't drink anymore. And we were kind of, it was kind of awkward because we don't want to drink in front of him if he's right, a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> so we're kind of like, no, it's okay. And then he just wants to play backgammon. And I'm like, wow, big punk 
rockabilly rocker, and it's like, no drinking, and let's play backgammon backstage right before he goes on to play. And then um, at some point, uh, there's a few other people in the room, not, not a lot. Like, it's really just us and him and a couple other people. And also, and Chris Cornell walked in, and it was like one of the most awkward moments where everybody just sort of stopped and went, uh, uh, Chris Cornell's here. Uh, and like, nobody said anything, and then he just sort of felt awkward, and he left. And we went back to normal, right? Um, and then Revan Horton Heat was like, oh, I got to go play now. I'll walk you out. And literally, we walked us down the hall, down the stairs, right to the side stage. And the band was already on stage playing. He walked right up, started singing, <laughs> didn't miss a beat. It was like he knew right on cue. And, and that was put on a great show. Um, but that show, what also was memorable was um, uh, two things. I remember halfway through the show, uh, Black Hole Sun had just become a hit, and uh, the band hated the audience it drew. <laughs> like, it was a lot of jocks and, you know, the sports yeah. types. Yeah, you have your, your pocket audience, and all of a sudden you have mass acceptance yeah. that's not necessarily the people you were playing for or to, yeah. or writing for, if you know what I mean. Or, yeah. You're used to playing the small clubs with the people who love your music top to bottom. Right. And then all of a sudden, here's people that only know one song, mm -hmm. right? And uh, he introduced the song kind of like, all right, well, most you can leave after this. See This is the one you came to pay for. That's it. He exactly said that. And then uh, even halfway through the song, he just sort of fell on his ass and sat on the stage, played his guitar, not singing the last part, and just sort of like, bye. Mm -hmm. And literally, when they finished that song, a good third of the audience just like left. Because that was the song they were there for. Um, but what was also really cool, though, was uh, they shot part of the video for My Wave there. And uh, so that was a cool memory to be a part of that. Uh, they played the song twice because, you know, you got to take different angles. They different angles. Different angles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so they did the video there. And uh, I, the year after that, I moved to Toronto. And uh, I can't remember what... Lollapalooza it was like 96 I think it? I think it was 95 at Molson Park in Barrie 95 yeah okay so I, I just moved to Toronto and I just got into a band and uh, like I moved here with a band and then it broke up they all moved back to Edmonton I was here by myself and uh, I was telling you this like you know I, I'm small town Edmonton guy moved to the big city Toronto and you know I auditioned for a band and it was like the audition was Wednesday I get in and Sunday we're shooting a video there's a financial backer. I don't have to pay for a thing. We're in the studio <laughs> recording. Shout out to Chris Perry. He was our engineer producer. And uh, like, like I said, not having to pay for a thing. And uh, that included, we'd have our nights after recording where uh, we would go to the bank machine and Thankfully, the financial investor had some money in there. You heard us. a happy sound when your card <laughs> not declined. No funds available. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Yay. And uh, this particular night, we hit about six bars. So it's a little hazy. And uh, we were at the Joker, which is actually just down the street from where we're at right now. Yeah. And um, we are there, and we're talking. We're kind of on the stairs, and this guy's walking up to us. And, and I'm like, I know this guy. So I, I'm telling Brendan, uh, Brendan Albert, who's like really great photographer around now. Shout out to Brendan. We're there talking, and I'm like, I know this guy. I know this guy. Why do I know this guy? And he walks between us, and I'm staring at him, and he sees that, and he walks like past us a bit, but then he turns around and he just starts talking to us. And we start talking music, and it's really cool. And then later, I'm like, Holy shit, you're Ben Shepherd from Soundgarden. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, also I'm fan guying out over this, and and uh, we just talk music some more, and. You know, uh, again, six bars in, right? Right. So I'm like, so what are you in town for? And he's like, well, I'm playing this thing called Lollapalooza tomorrow, you know, with Metallica. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that thing. I look really bad right now. <laughs> and and so we talk some more, and then he's like, well, I got to go, and, well, you know, give me your names, and I'll put you on our guest list plus one. So we're stoked, obviously. And, sure. You know, this. I'm like, man, you move to Edmonton, you get in a band, you don't pay for a thing, and you party with rock stars. <laughs> like. So this is just how it goes, right? That's why Toronto's the center of the universe. <laughs> My God, now I understand. Yeah, right? And uh, so anyways, uh, we decide, well, if, they're, if he's here, others might be. So we go to the roof, and then we're hanging out with the screaming trees. We do shots of Jaeger. And um, 
then I start thinking through the haze of it all, like, okay, Lollapalooza is in Barrie, not Toronto. And Barrie is, you know, you know a, an hour and a half north of the city, for those of you who don't know it. On good days. And then when you've got 35,000 people going to a concert there, the 400 tends to back up from... Which it was. From it King took City hours. North. Yeah, it can take you four or five hours to get up to Barrie, unless you know the secret Highway 11 route. Yeah, and, and so anyways, uh, I'm like, okay, so there's a couple of girls hanging out with Screaming Trees. So, you know, I'm a musician guy, and I'm like, are you guys going to see the show tomorrow? Because uh, we might need a ride. <laughs> and and uh, more shots, and they say they would, but uh, I don't really remember the end of the night. I just remember waking up at Brendan's, and we are like, are we going to Soundgarden today on their guest list? I think so. It's kind of hazy. <laughs> you know, and are a couple girls come and pick us up that we don't even know. I think so. And then the buzzer rang, and it was them. And uh, they had a really hot car, which was nice, Camaro and all that. And uh, on the way there, I was like, you know, we got to talking, and it's like, wow, we have a whole bunch of tickets, because they were on guest list, they had tickets. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we did sell them when we got there. And uh, what a great time, you know? Like, we were on Soundgarden's guest list, we hit the beer tent, we had a great time, um, crowd surfed. Did the whole bit, That's you cool. know. It's so cool when a band invites you that, and and follows through on the promise, not just a one a.m. Absolutely, it was so cool, you know. Yeah, you know, and then uh, so that was that time, and that was a great like new to Toronto sort of thing, like you know, mm -hmm. I was just like that was a rock and roll summer for me, right? I guess. And then um, and then fast forward, they'd quit, and then they reunited, and. Uh, I was working at live, well, working for Live Nation, and I got managed to get score front row tickets. Uh, I took Daryl from the Bovine, um, and got to see them like their first tour back at reunion. Mm -hmm. Sounded great. And then uh, uh, the last time I saw them was um, King Animal tour, and uh, my friend Tina, who was working at Gibson, um, Gibson basically gave Chris Turnell all his guitars. Uh, there's a specific green guitar that Chris uh, plays that she gave him. Uh, anyways, we got there and we got passes, and so I got to see them then as well. And did you see yeah. Audio Slave? No, I never saw Audio Slave. Okay. I was not a Audio Slave fan because it's not Soundgarden. Okay, <laughs> which I, I I saw them and quite enjoyed it. Obviously, I, you know, yeah, I, yeah it, I'm sure it would have been great, but it just wasn't Soundgarden, and I just wasn't for it. Yeah, never never got into Audio Slave, so. But, uh, uh, yeah, and, you know, it's, it's just been weird because, like, even yesterday with uh, Dylan, our, our webmaster graphics guy, uh, we were talking, and I was explaining how uh, about Mother Love Bone and the connection with Temple of Dog, connection with Soundgarden, before even thinking any of this was going to happen, right? right? Um, and if you don't know Mother Love Bone, look it up. They're, it's almost like they were the... Unknown band that if they didn't, they were the conduit to everything yeah. that came out of the Seattle scene in the and grunge. Yeah, I think like everyone says, Nirvana was what made grunge. But uh, just a quick Mother Love Bone story was a band that was signed to A and M Records. They were one of the first bands out of Seattle signed from that scene. On like two to three days before their album being released, the singer passed away from a heroin overdose. Andrew Wood, who was um, roommate with Chris Cornell, right? And part of the healing process was a band called Temple of the Dog came out of it. Chris Cornell was a singer, but also two of the guys from the band, uh, Jeff Ament and Stone Gossard, who are part of Pearl Jam now. And that's how, that, that was an introduction of Eddie Vedder, right? And uh, the band had, uh, like the guys from, but the Love Bone went on to make Pearl Jam. They had songs recorded, but they needed a singer. And this is kind of the interim. And it introduced uh, Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam. And Mother Love Bone was more of a glam band still. So if that album got released and that band toured, there, there would have been no Pearl Jam. There would have been no Temple of the Dog, which was a huge start of grunge. Mm -hmm. And Mother Love Bone was still on the glam side of things. So... Then there was Green, Green River back then, too, that was tied into all of this, if I'm not mistaken. Green River was pre-all that, sort of. I mean, uh, Jeff Amant and Stone Gossard, I think, were in Green River. 
there's also Mud Honey, Tad, Melvin's. Uh, well, Mookie Blaylock. <laughs> you know, for a little while, that was Pearl Jam, Mookie yeah. Blaylock. So. Yeah, that's when they didn't know what they were going to do. Right. Right? And around the time, so, the genesis of the beginnings of Sub Pop. And... Absolutely. So, a lot of music history, uh, and... You know, I, I posted this on my wall earlier today, but the sad part is from my generation, and, and my generation meaning bands who kind of came to uh, popularity when I was younger. Right. Not like, like ACDC, they were popular, but they were already popular. Mm -hmm. And same with Black Sabbath and Judas Priest and all Zappa that. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, but like Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Stone Temple Pilots and Soundgarden. And it's like last man standing. Is any better? Blind Melon. <laughs> Blind Melon, yeah. Shannon Hoon was in my list, you know. Um, so it's quite a sad thing. Uh, yeah. Especially the music's been a huge part of my life. I mean, I s still, like, all I do is music, right? From yeah. the business side. But so very sad to see this happen today. Um, you know, it, it's an it's ongoing thing. And I think uh, if, if people are in need of help, because part of the speculation is uh, this might be a suicide, but it's speculation. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, if you need help, ask for it. Reach make, out. Make a call. Make a Facebook message. Just say, help, call me. Yeah. Or, or send a text, help, call me. because that, or, or there's numbers. You can go to CAMH or there's, there's phone numbers. There's distress lines. I think there's one in Toronto. It's 416-406-HELP. Right. If you need someone. But just send a message. It's like, I need help. If I got that message at 3 in the morning as a text, from someone I know, I would pick up the. F I would get out of bed and pick up the phone because you yeah. just never know where these things come from. And but I've had those. I've yeah. had those. You know, like I, uh, during that time, I, I, I remember uh, in college, uh, year two, I had my midterms. Uh, but six in the morning, I had to go to the hospital to help a friend help out, someone out. Yeah. Well, last year at Indie One Hundred One, which is a conference part of our festival, um, we had a health and wellness sort of conversation. We did one seminar on it with Ace, but we've been discussing it and even as much as having a meeting yesterday about having a health and wellness full day this year at Indy 101. Yeah. And it goes from health and wellness, from insurance, from being sick, from depression, from mental illness to addiction. And we're planning a big day this year. And if anyone out there, um, wants to help or has suggestions or has topics to talk about or can address addiction issues or mental health or depression issues or general health issues, you know, we want to bring as many people in as we can, uh, bring people like the Unison Fund in who can help musicians and people in the industry and just, you know, rock and roll is fun and, you know, yay, we're out at a concert, we're having a beer, but there's way bigger issues in life and yeah. it's part of our industry. And the industry gets tarnished occasionally because of different things, and you know it's the glam and the sex and drugs and rock and roll. But yeah. we need to talk seriously about mental health and addiction and well-being. And I'm the worst to talk about this diet, even and exercise. And we want to make a whole day out of it. So if anyone has suggestions or ideas or would like to be on a panel, get rid of, get hold of me or Cole or Daryl or. Send us a note on Facebook and say, "Hey, maybe we should talk about this, or yeah. maybe we should talk about that." So, it's important to uh, people know that there's help out there; uh, they're not alone. Yeah. Right. Um, it, uh, as you mentioned last year, uh, our friend Ace Piva, uh, who Ace was a drummer for me, like when I was playing, and we toured and like did some shows, and uh, he he did some recordings with me. Like one of the most solid guys I know. Uh, he's he's. Uh, become like a health and wellness coach, but he's also a tour manager, so it's like, so he can help bands while on the road. Uh, so he did a discussion last year, it was one of our most popular panels last year, and uh, uh, so that's where the discussion came out of this, this year, mm -hmm. and we're gonna expand it out to be a full day. And uh, we didn't just have a meeting yesterday, we had the yeah. meeting the day before, in New York, I had a couple meetings, uh, and it's been nothing but positive response, and um, hopefully we can just sort of do some help. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to talk about, but you get a group yeah. of people together who can address it or have been through it, and I've worked with so many musicians, without mentioning names, who have come through the other side, and I'm so happy they're still here today. 
and not necessarily just drugs, but also depression and other things that um, I'm very thankful. But if everyone just get in a room and talk about it, you know, yeah. it can make a big difference. If it's, you know, this sounds so cliche, but if it saves one life, it's worth our efforts for the day and everyone else who's involved. So Absolutely. Wow. Uh, <laughs> this is the heaviest one we've done yet, but uh, I think it's, it's worth the discussion. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Like, I mean, this is a hard one for me because that was such a, uh, a a threat, almost like, you know, like I've seen comments online where people say this is like part of your DNA, part of the, the thread work of your life because, you know, almost 30 years this band has been a part of, like, my life and inspiration. And uh, it, it's a sad one because it's almost the hardest because you didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. That's That's the thing. With Lane Staley, uh, it was almost like everybody was just saying, saying it's a matter of time. Uh, with Scott Weiland, we he was in and out of trouble, and, and you know, Chuck Berry was ninety, so that was just you know. Right, we didn't even really say uh, yeah anything about Chuck. Uh, you know, we lost another great there, but uh, and Freddie was ill, who I mentioned earlier, so we knew that was coming because it was stage four. And yeah. And if anything that, that Chris Cornell said was, you know, he said, I was addicted, I'm past that. Um, you know, it, it, it sort of sounded like he had... He had Put it behind had, him, so had, to speak. Yeah. It's with you for the rest of your life, whatever you're addicted to. You, you deal with it every day. Yeah. You know, um, someone mentioned on Facebook, if you're in town and you're on the road and you need a meeting, right? get a meeting. If, yeah. you, if that's in your mind, it's like, I need a meeting today, find a meeting. Yeah. You know, and, and, and through other friends, too. Like, uh, I, I messaged with my friend uh, Marky Ray today, who was uh, tour manager for Nine Inch Nails on the Lollapalooza tour in 92. And, you know, they always were doing, like, that was a very communal tour where everybody was helping. And It was that new generation you know, all working together. Like, all those bands on that yeah. tour were, like, the young guns in a lot of ways. Oh, there's, there's pictures I've seen or videos I've seen where Marky's like doing backup vocals with Eddie Vedder <laughs> or Chris Cornell for one of the other bands and playing guitar with Nine Inch Nails and things like that. So, um, you know, my heart goes out to Marky because I know he's hurting today quite a bit. Um, you know, like, like that's what I mean. Like I've gotten to know a lot of people that are kind of like around this, this scene and stuff and it's, it, we all feel it. So, mm -hmm. um, so if uh, you want to help out with, uh, we're going to do a health and wellness day at Indy 101 this year. Which will be in November. Yeah. During the course of the conference, November 7th to 12th. So. Right. Reach out to us. And if you know anybody needs help, reach out to them. Yeah. And if you need help, you know. Reach out to somebody. Reach out to somebody. <laughs> like, don't wait. You know, don't let it get, get you. Yeah. So. Uh, Let's go have a nice long, long weekend, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> yeah. It's Victoria so, Day. <laughs> so, yeah, with that, uh, just appreciate everybody around you, you know, yeah. and let's have a good weekend, and uh, let's, uh, let's move forward. Yeah. All right, so. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Cheers.